that was uh in there uh <laughs> brian Johnny. desmond yeah he's uh one of our locals versus uh versus heather i don't know exactly where she's from but i know she uh you know streams on twitch at poke mom gaming so definitely a pretty good up and coming player um from what i've seen on twitter at least and so as we look at this, uh, the very first question in the Luke Metal versus Eternus matchup is, does Eternus play Phoebe? If they don't play Phoebe, Luke Metal probably never loses. But this Eternus does play one Phoebe and one Sable IV, so they can recycle that Phoebe if they have to. Yeah, that's, that is very key because Zamazenta um, previous was just too much of a, a hurdle to overcome um, before Phoebe came out, for sure. And so we're going to see an attachment there to the Eveltal. That is not <laughs> what they are looking for this turn. No, no. no so Crobat, definitely no a slow start for Eternatus. Um, Unfortunately for Heather, it looks like there is no Zashi in there. You don't necessarily want to Marnie them after they did that, but you don't really have a choice. Um, didn't really Marnie into a whole lot of good things here. Oh, this um, is everything you really need. You got your Zamazenta ready to go you can go capture for a zashian now this is one where the way you play this matchup kind of differs normally you'd want to go zashian plus two zamazentas to really force them to use phoebe twice but when you start the luke metal you need that draw engine it's a uh, it's probably a good time to start intrepid sorting and you know drawing cards for sure i'm just gonna adjust here because it wasn't quite what we want to see here there we see the capture. Go ahead and grab that Zashian. Choosing not to bench the Zamazenta. Interesting play there. Perhaps afraid of a boss play. And the Intrepid Sword. Failing to hit a Metal Energy, which is unfortunate. One of the ways that uh, Heather can really make a good play here. Or not here currently, but in the future is loading up that Zashian. So if that Sable IV ever hits the board, she's able to boss it up and take it out before it can ever I mean, do any damage at all. So getting that Zashian ready to go and keeping it on the bench out of harm's way is one of her goals in this matchup. Yeah, definitely. Um, sorry, I was uh, trying to adjust the, the screen so we could see both hands a little bit more um, um, in the screen. But definitely uh, the, 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 the Eternatus player definitely wants to try to get that Eternatus set up here shortly. Doesn't look like it's going to um, come to fruition quite yet with that it was that weakness guard so they're a little bit behind the ball on trying to outpace luke metal to take that early knockout uh, with not having a single uh, eternatus on the board and without without an energy on the board for eternatus is also pretty huge in, in this game right now yeah the weakness guard energy going to the Veltal is an interesting choice it doesn't actually fulfill any of the attack requirements. Yeah. So I'm not 100% sure. I mean, the good, you never want to attack with Goon anyway, I suppose, but. Yeah. Um, they might have done it to try to get an extra card on that Crobat. Um, is, is something I might, uh, is kind of in the forefront of my mind there. But still. It looks like we see. Okay. One Crobat, one VMAX. I thought there were two VMAX in that research and i was gonna say that's oh geez, a, that's yeah. a game changer yeah um so eternatus generally plays at least three v max so you would assume they have at least two at some point to bring up um still at least two turns before eternatus can do what he wants to do in smash for that 270 um so heather's looking really good here um at the start of this game and there's gonna be a quick ball hopefully gonna be able to find an eternus v there it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> they are, in fact, in the deck. Yep. Uh, a lot of digging into that Eternatus, uh, for sure. A little bit behind. Um, but at least now that they have it in the game, they're, they're two turns behind actually doing damage. And actually removing that energy could help, especially uh, preventing that full metal wall coming into effect in the next turn or two. Yes, that derail actually quite nice. Uh, potentially preventing Steel Fist, just getting rid of the energy, which means one less chance for a Zashian to receive an energy, because that Zashian, always the big threat. The Zamazenta is the wall, but the Zashian is the thing that forces you to really, like, you're on a clock. <laughs> when the Zashian gets powered up, you're on a clock to take out the Zamazentas. Yeah, you definitely are. You don't want to let um, Zashian run uh, rampant is, you know, is 
as he wants to because you normally only will see one Zacian out there and then you'll see a Luke Metal and, and Zamazentas at the rest of the game. Uh, so if you can neutralize Zamazenta before he the offensive threat that he can be, um, that's just better for you as you know a player playing against Luke Metal. There's the Intrepid Sword choosing not to attach the Metal Energy. Interesting choice there. Potentially wants to save it for that full Metal Wall GX. But boy, it is really hard for me to not just automatically put that on the Zashi in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, playing the long game, Heather is. Um, playing that defensive game. So you can't really... I mean, I probably, as an aggressive player, would have put it on the Zashian to just put a little bit of extra pressure on the Eternatus player. Uh, but if you're playing the long game, um, you can't necessarily fault that. So I'm um, interested to see what's going to happen here in the next turn if Desmond gets... You know, uh, Zos, uh, Zamazenta, not Zamazenta, I'm sorry, an Eternatus at least partially set up, evolved, and starting to get that bench um, set up um, for the turn after. Uh, we'll see where, where it goes from here. Um, but I do look, think it's interest oh, interesting. Sorry. Heather still choosing not to bench the Zamazenta. Again, potentially trying to play around getting chip damage from any of these Pokemon like Eveltal. Yeah. But it's also one of those things where I'm always worried about Marnie and you just suddenly lose a chance to find your Zamazenta. So we'll see if that pays off. She's potentially played a lot more Luke Metal than I have. Um, from the looks of it or for the sounds of it, I think she has. Uh, she's been playing it a lot in the Players' Cup um, and even was uh, playing against uh, Zach Lashaw a few times uh, the other night. Oh, okay. So she does put down the Zamazenta and then Marnie's that hand away. Um, so she does have it on the board, and she is set up um, kind of perfectly for what a Luke Metal wants to do. Now she can threaten the full metal wall now that the the Luke Metal has two energies on there, but she doesn't have to go up right now. Uh, currently with a doll there, she can kind of wait until that Eternatus kind of gets powered up, and then she's kind of sitting at a good spot there. Ooh, and triple boss is this is a very good place to be. <laughs> There's the first crushing hammer. Oh, it's heads. Heads. Let's see. <laughs> Who do they take it off of? The Luke Metal. The Luke Metal. Okay. So, oh, and thank you so much for the follow. Um, I very much appreciate that. I know I'm a little behind on the chat. I'll get to it here in a minute. I am, I'm not the best multitasker. Um, still new to this, but still having a lot of fun. Um, just talk, just talking to, you know, to Mello and talking about to all the community members. Um, just about Pokemon. It's just, just it's a fun fun thing to do as we see two crushing hammer heads some very important information there and something that you Ooh. oh Ooh. they chose to put them themselves down to a zero card hand now they're that... in trouble Ooh, okay so luke metal doesn't have energy at the moment so he can't do the full metal wall but still has a lot this is going to be interesting there's a lot of choices that can really go on here. We have the tag call, which can find Guzmahala, can find Malolana as a yep. switch card. Uh, they're already down Cynthia Caitlin. Let's double check that list. They do play two Cynthia Caitlin, so they could potentially draw if they want to. Yep. Never mind, it is prized. Yeah, so it is prized, but you know they do have the Guzmahala, the Malolana, um, and and for her seeing nothing on the opponent's uh, side in a hand, she can kind of just sit pretty with uh, with the Zashian. And go ahead and intrepid sword. I don't think that's an oh well with the pink damage. Potentially, if it is an energy, Evolto could retreat for free and take the knockout. I feel like that's a risk you have to take. Yeah. The odds of your opponent top decking, they have to talk about Crobat, Research, Marnie, or Energy. Yeah. They can't do quick ball, they can't do PCOM. Uh, potentially a great ball, although they only have two Crobats left in deck. Okay, so that's actually a good play. Um Sticking, you know, something with the retreat cost in the active, so they would, they can't really do that unless they have a professor's. If it's a top deck of a professor's, then that might potentially be something um, troublesome for for Heather. But I think she's sitting a good spot there. Yeah, I agree. Heather is fully in control of this game. Really, it's the game is slow, and Luke Metal wins when the game is slow. Yep. Switch into a doll. And potentially choosing, nope, just going to go ahead and Intrepid Sword, draw three more cards. All right, so to catch up a little bit on chat here, we see friend, he says he's got, he sees we're based out of Pittsburgh, and he was born there. 
I'm going to visit um, in the fall and would love to meet anyone there um, that our shops are doing tournaments for sure. Um, just join our Discord at uh, at uh, Pits, or Triple P and you can uh, find a shop there. We have plenty of local shops that, that are about to start up. And we also have um, one that we're based out of, um, Heroes Inc., where... You know, we have been playing for uh, about a few months now. Um, it's been safe and, you know, masks, all the good stuff. Um, but definitely come in and, and hang out and, and say hi to us. So I uh, would love to see you. And we're going to see Heather go ahead and power up that Luke Metal, boss like up the Eternatus VMAX, and hit that full Metal Wall GX to remove that energy. Oh, that, was, that was a really good play, I think. I'm really putting her in control and Eternatus is so behind right now. Oh, oh there's the but research. Finally the research. <laughs> Unfortunately for the Eternatus player, there's still not much going on here. Mm -mm. You have two energies on any Veltal, and uh, that's it. <laughs> Doesn't feel good. <laughs> so we're going to so, say Hammer, Tails. Yeah, I think it was Squirtle. Tails. So in chat, uh, Colton says that this matches the one reason he's glad he didn't play Eternatus today. <laughs> um, yeah, um, Eternatus doesn't generally like Luke Metal. Uh, Phoebe definitely helps, especially if you have two. Um, but it's definitely, if you see how this game is going, you can get trapped and kind of just play, in, or, or Luke Metal just kind of does what it wants to do and Eternatus is kind of stuck. So he's gone through a lot. I, I wish I knew how many cards he had left in his deck, but it looks like it's starting to get, become dangerously low, and he really hasn't done anything at this point. And we see a bench of a Sableye is uh, potentially very sketchy here. If there is an energy top deck or anything, uh, Brave Blade on that Sableye is potentially going to be GG's. You really need that table eye to put in some work at some point in this game. And thank you so much for the follow, Anderson. I appreciate it so much. And there's, we could potentially see that play happen. Yeah. We'll see if Heather wants to go the aggressive route or wants to be a little more chill, or he could also boss up the Eternatus V. Yeah, she's an intrepid sword. There's a lot of choices here. She a has lot a of lot of options. Okay, so she does go with Goose Hollow. Good too. That's a thing. Yeah. Gusala grabs some goggles and a special energy. Hello from Brazil, um, Anderson says. So yeah, thank you and welcome to uh, welcome to the the Twitch stream here, and hope you enjoy um, our tournament. Putting goggles on the Zamazenta, an interesting choice. So one of the things about this is they already have Zigzagoons down, and Phoebe goes through Metal Goggles. So normally you want to cape the Zamazenta whenever you can in this matchup because they don't have any Zigzagoons left, and the goggles don't actually do much otherwise. Yeah, and thank you so much, Pittsburgh Pens, for those uh, for those bits. I appreciate it. There we see a second V Max. This one has energy on it. He does have energy, so okay. So he is getting ready. Um, does he have a switch out? We don't know. He can potentially so, do some damage to that Luke metal, but there's still... Ooh, there's the Marnie. Unfortunately, putting the boss on the bottom of the deck. Mm -hmm. Boss was such a valuable resource right now with that juicy Sableye on the bench and potentially to boss trap as well. Yep. The big question is, do they find the switch out this turn? And they don't, so that is actually huge. And at this point, you think you could just uh, even Malolana potentially put Zamazenta up into the active just to kind of wall that VMAX from doing any damage, but she likes to go with the Marnie. Choosing the Marnie, uh, likely getting that Eternus player closer to one of their switch outs. But that could be exactly where they want them to be. There is a special energy on the Eternatus. Zamazenta, of course, removes special energy. Mm -hmm. So that's not a bad combo, necessarily. And we see another Steel Fist. Uh, 10 damage shy, unfortunately, from the Brave Blade finishing off that Eternatus. Let's see. Got it's not throwing down a switch yet. So despite the Marnie, they might not have found it. 
Yeah, and just another. Oh, okay, so as we was about to say, they they find the switch, so they will be taking um, some dam or Luke Metal will take damage here. So do they have a boss to take out the Zacian on the bench, or do they take out the active? Ooh, energy going through mm. the turn is Vmax. This is actually really good if you're the Luke Metal player. You're yes. really happy to see Sableye not getting powered up. Yeah, Sableye is super dangerous with those crazy claws. Um, that almost guarantees a knockout on anything with just uh, 50 damage on anything. Uh, so seeing it go into the Eternatus is a huge deal. And there we see showing the Crobat, important information to know going through. The fourth Crobat they do have access to. So if you ever clear off a bench space, they do have draw. See the promotion of the Zamazenta. So definitely can take that special energy out um, with the Zamazenta's attack and just kind of stall him out. Um, potentially even Mallow laundering if they do any kind of chip damage to this um, Zamazenta throughout the game. Currently eyeing up. Nope, not going to bench anything else. Going to go ahead and assault tackle, remove that weakness card energy. Potentially a punish. We'll see if the attachment on the bench was because there was an extra energy or not. For Heather, I think that was the right call, not um, benching anything else, especially that uh, Zoshin. You, you do not want to give um, the Eternatus player any kind of prizes outside of that walling Zamazenta. So playing that on her part really um, perfectly, I think. Energy, let's see. Do they have a Ooh. Phoebe? They do not have a Phoebe, but the boss is just as good. Yep. Because the 30 damage does mean we can take out that Zoshin on the bench. Going so one as, as long as there's no Phoebe, um, having even just a second Zamazenta might not be a bad idea. Um, you you do see the threat of um, Evital that can over time do some kind of damage, but definitely, definitely, I think the game is in Heather's um, hands right here, unless Phoebe comes out to um, you know to play. And uh, sorry, I was a little bit behind on the chat there. Thank you so much for the follow um, for the lock and um, Najaz Najaza. <laughs> uh, appreciate uh, the follows there. We see the long pause. There's an escape rope that doesn't really help. I guess it doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. Maybe Eltal can go ahead and uh, derail or clutch. I don't know why you'd clutch, but you could clutch. Oh, clutch does more damage. That's why you'd clutch. Yeah. But of course, that also gets the Eternatus out of harm's way, which is nice. Those two Malolanas going to the bottom of the deck. And of course, now if Eternatus has Phoebe, they have access to it between that Marnie and their top deck next turn. They should see all the rest of those cards. Yep. Crushing Hammer comes out, misses. Okay, so finally, the threat of, of uh, Sableyes is coming out for sure. Let's see, do they choose to load search with the Sableye? Or just derail for zero? I mean, load search sounds better. Especially seeing that... Yeah, so... Ooh, and a boss comes out. So let's see, we have that... Uh, that Eternatus VMAX that will be knocked out from the Zamazenta here. Yep. Gonna go ahead and grab those prizes. Not terrible. You get three more cards. You also force them to have energy in addition to Phoebe after this. And they are down uh, a lot of energy. They play eight. They're down at least five. They're down all their weakness cards. Yep. So Heather's just playing this pretty, pretty perfectly for the most part um, uh, for the Luke Metal perspective. And I know Dez has kind of just been put in a bad position. I know the beginning of the game, it was a little hard to get those, uh, those Eternatus is out. Uh, and he's just a little bit behind the eight ball with Heather kind of doing what she wants to do throughout the game so far. We're going to go ahead and see a Crobat for four, potentially. Let's see if there's any more cards you can burn down. There's the energy. So just looking for a Phoebe. Going to draw half of the remainder of their deck. Over half. And let's see, can they 
draw the Phoebe. There's a long pause. (laughs) They're going to draw six out of nine cards, a 66% chance. Two thirds of the time they hit it. Let's see. Does it turn to hit the Phoebe? Heather going over the well played. She knows exactly what to expect here. And there is the Phoebe. There's the Phoebe. Wow. And we see Phoebe, of course, going through Zamazenta's Dauntless Shield ability and allowing a VMAX to hit it. And that is going to be game going to that, Eternatus. That was uh, a very well played part on on Heather's. I don't think she misplayed anything there. Um, just getting that Phoebe end game was huge for Desmond and uh, kind of just takes it out at the very end. Uh, if he doesn't get that Phoebe, <laughs> he's probably a little bit in trouble there for sure. Oh yeah, Phoebe is such an important addition to that deck. You saw that without a Phoebe, there's absolutely no way Eternus ever wins that game. But with the addition of Phoebe, it's not a bad matchup for them. It's not a bad matchup. It's not, it's not like super great, but I'm not afraid of it. If I'm Eternus, I'm playing Luke Metal. I have a Phoebe or two in my deck. I'm just like, you know what? This is fine. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and take a look at another one of our videos here. Also, if you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe because we're a long way in helping us grow. Remember, we release a podcast episode once a week on all the major platforms. We also stream every Friday on Twitch and make a Whimsy Watch monthly report. 